do so. Instead of facing deportation, hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants are being offered a chance to stay in the United States under an order issued by President Obama. Fox News Radio Steve Taylor live in Washington. President Obama has told immigration authorities that young people who came to the U.S. illegally as children but have not been lawbreakers since, who finished high school or served in uniform, will not be deported and will be eligible for work permits. He says it's the right thing to do. We are a better nation uh, than one that expels innocent young kids. The president also says it's the right thing economically, not spending enforcement money on productive people who aren't criminals. Ben? Thank you, Steve. Reaction from the campaign trail from Republican presidential hopeful Mitt Romney. I think the action that the president uh, took today makes it more difficult to reach that long-term solution because an executive order is, of course, just a short-term matter. It can be reversed by subsequent presidents. Romney in New Hampshire as part of a six-state bus tour did not say he would reverse the decision if elected. The future uncertain in Greece as the nation prepares for a Sunday election. Depending on the outcome, the country could be forced out of the Eurozone, and that's causing a lot of concern and even fear. We've seen reports of people stocking up on canned goods, the hospitals are running out of money, people aren't getting paid for the jobs they're doing, and even uh, chemists, we understand, uh, pharmacies uh, want to give prescriptions on credit. They'll only take cash. That is in short supply, as you can imagine, in this country. Fox's Ashley Webster in Athens. Wall Street ending the trading week on a positive note, the Dow up 115 points due to expectations that central banks around the world will step in to limit the damage from a debt crisis in Europe. The Nasdaq also up 36 points and the S&P adding 14. You're listening to Fox News Radio, fair and balanced. Hi, I'm a ho. The one with the roof, walls, and all the things that make me yours. Things like your comfy couch, entertainment center, and that lamp you just couldn't live without. These are the things that you could lose in a flood. And homeowners insurance doesn't cover floods. Even just a few inches of water in your home can cost you tens of thousands of dollars. But in moderate to low risk areas, flood insurance starts as low as $129 a year. Visit FloodSmart.gov to learn what a flood could cost you. If your air conditioner broke down, would you call an expert auctioneer? Don't open up the air conditioner now. Can I get a ranch? Looking for a ranch? Looking at a toolbox for a ranch? Screwdriver? Got a screwdriver? Yeah, no. You'd call the real air conditioning experts. Service experts. You'll get a written 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you've heard you need expensive repairs, now get a free second opinion. Call Service Experts Heating and Air Conditioning at 866-EXPERTS or visit serviceexperts.com. Also known as Peachtree Service Experts. License CN003058. After a mid-air meltdown, a federal judge rules on the competency of a JetBlue pilot. A U.S. District Judge in Amarillo, Texas has ruled the pilot is mentally competent to stand trial and has ordered his psychiatric evaluation sealed. The pilot, Clayton Osborne, allegedly ran through the cabin of his plane yelling about Jesus and Al-Qaeda. Fox News Radio's Courtney Keeley, several people aboard the March flight from New York to Las Vegas are suing the pilot and the airline. Police in Buffalo, New York, just confirming that a body found is the man at the center of a nationwide manhunt. Authorities had been searching for Dr. Timothy Jordan since his ex-girlfriend was shot to death earlier this week at the hospital where they both worked. Police say Jordan died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. After several people were killed at the Indiana State Fair last year, officials unanimously approve a new emergency plan. When a storm hit last year as a Sugarland concert was about to start, the huge stage collapsed. The Fair Commission has okayed an emergency management plan that specifies 16 potential hazards, and no longer will there be a gray area about who has the responsibility for canceling an event. A plaque bearing the names of the seven who died has been unveiled at the fairgrounds. Board Chair Steve Zimmerman. I will daily pay my respects to the people who've been affected. Andrea Belenga was injured in the collapse. Made me sad looking at it, thinking, thank goodness my name wasn't on this plaque. But made me sad for all those people that didn't make it that night. One victim's mother says she's upset that there wasn't an emergency plan in place before her daughter was killed. Jennifer Kuiper, Fox News Radio. More drama for actress Lindsay Lohan. The Mean Girl star was treated by paramedics for exhaustion and dehydration today after she failed to show up to the set of her latest film. Lohan's publicist saying the actress is fine but has been working a grueling schedule, including an all-night shoot last night. Last week, Lohan was hospitalized after a car crash near Los Angeles. I'm Pam Puso, Fox News Radio. Deb Carr, 
Thompson and Tiger Woods briefly held the lead all alone at the U.S. Open. After a great save in two, Tiger Woods leads the U.S. Open. That was the Entertainment and Sports Programming Network with a call. Tiger's lead short-lived, gave it back with a bogey on five. Tiger now shares the lead with Jim Furyk and Michael Thompson. While at the College World Series in Omaha, 5-0 lead right now for UCLA over Stony Brook. They're in the bottom of the second inning. Next game coming up at 9 Eastern, Arizona faces Florida State. The Cubs got a two-run double from Steve Clevenger to shut out the Red Sox 3-0. Rangers outfielder Josh Hamilton hospitalized with an intestinal virus. While Major League Baseball has denied the Mets' request to have the official scoring changed in Wednesday's game against the Rays, so R.A. Dickey still with the one-hitter. Sports news as it happens. This is Fox Sports Radio. This is State Senator Barry Lauterbilt. Once again, we find ourselves in the middle of an election season, the time that the people across this land can exercise their right to have their voice heard in their government. But your voice is only heard if you take time to go to the polls and vote. So I encourage you to vote this year. But also, I encourage you to know the candidates for which you're voting because they become your voice to the government. This is State Senator Barry Loudermilk, and I approve this message. This message was paid for by the Barry Loudermilk Election Committee. At Richard Barnes Concrete, we take pride in our work and would like the opportunity to be of service to you. With 35 years' experience, Richard Barnes Concrete can handle any of your concrete or masonry needs. Some of our services are tearing out of existing concrete, driveways and patios or repairs, and alterations to existing work. No matter the size of job, we can help. We also have a commercial construction division. Visit us at GAConcrete.com or call 770-546-0138. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. Showcase on News Talk AM 1270 WYXC. Uh, John Underwood in the studio with you. Will is not here this evening. He is actually taking a much needed vacation with his wife and uh, they are going, I believe, fishing. So he's uh, going to try to call in next week with a fishing report from Florida. But I'm not saying that he's going to. He's probably going to forget, but it's all right. It's okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to say thank you for everybody tuning in to the Bartow Sports Showcase. Before we get started, I want to say thank you to a couple of our sponsors. Red Top Mower, Miss Patty Loveless and the crew down there. They're located eight miles south of Main Street on Highway 41, just before you get into uh, Cobb County. They're there on the left. They're a Husqvarna dealer. If you need anything Husqvarna or if you need anything small engine fixed, Take it down there to them. They'll give you a great deal, and they'll fix it right up for you. If you need a Honda generator for uh, camping for tailgate season coming up in a couple of months, go out and see them. They've got the best prices around. They will help you with anything that you need. I also want to say thank you to Ace Hardware Carswell. Father's Day is this Sunday, and they've got a big sale going on. Their big green egg grills. They get If uh, you, you come in for a Father's Day uh Big Green Egg sale is $75 in free accessories with an extra large smoker purchase, $50 in free accessories with a large smoker purchase, $25 in free accessories with a medium smoker purchase. Go out and see them. It's 924 West Avenue, or you can give them a call see if uh, they've got some still in stock because I'm sure those things are going very quickly. 770-382-1298. Uh, go out and see Mr. John Payne and uh, Kira and the gang out there at Red Top. Uh, Ace Hardware Carvel. Like I said, Will's not in here with me tonight, but uh, I do have something very, very exciting that's coming to town June the 30th. Andre Flewellen of the Detroit Lions and Ronnie Brown of the San Diego Chargers, both formerly Carvel Purple Hurricanes, they are going to be putting on a free football camp. 
It's going to be June 30th at the Cartersville High School football field. Registration is going to be from 7.30 to 8.30. Camp is going to be from 8.30 to 1 p.m. I have gotten word that the, there are age groups. It's going to be from ages 8 to 18, but I, from uh, talking to some of the people involved with it, I don't think they're going to turn anybody away. They had about 100 kids last year, and they're wanting to double that amount of kids this year. And uh, so Andre and Ronnie are really wanting to give back to the community so go out and support them if if you've got uh, a grandson granddaughter in you know a kid anybody that might have a ball with this take them out there to it it's free you can learn from professional nfl players you can learn football fundamentals you can participate in drills you can hear their stories about how they got from where from you know this small town carnival to playing in the nfl you can get autographs you can, and just have a lot of fun. If you need further information, give Coach Jones a call at Carlsville High School at 770-382-3200, extension 63. And uh, Coach Jones uh, will more than happy be more than happy to give you any of the information that you need. Uh, I know we're waiting on uh, Mr. Kevin Weekly to call in, and uh, it's uh, I appreciate everything Kevin's uh, done with the show. He's a great addition, and you know he gives us some of the best information that you can find around. I don't think uh, ESPN, Fox Sports, or anybody's got uh, better information than Kevin does. But if you want to talk about anything tonight, give us a call, 770-382-1270. On the local side of things, the uh, Carswell Purple Hurricane uh, football team that's going to be for this net, this upcoming uh, football season participating in a 707 passing league camp down at uh, Sprayberry High School is the Cam Newton Foundation put it on uh, camp because Cam Newton went to uh, went to school down there at Sprayberry and uh, Carlson went down there and they won the uh, a the the whole tournament. They played Gainesville in a uh, best two out of three for the championship. Carlson prevailed, so they are actually going. Uh, Winning that one, they were take there. They won a trip to Florida to participate in the national championship competition in on a uh, on the seven oh seven passing league. So and that's that's a great thing. Talk, uh, talk to uh, Coach Barton. He said that he's been really impressed of how hard his guys have been working. His uh, younger son Brooks is is the uh, quarterback. He's a, a left-handed quarterback, just like his dad was. Big, tall guy. He's got a good throwing arm. And he's just been really impressed about how hard these guys have been working in the offseason, in the weight room, on, on the f- uh, practice field. And for them to go out and win this 707 tournament is a huge accomplishment for them before they ever get into the regular season of high school football. So he's really looking forward to this season and what what it can bring. And uh, he's just he's just real proud of, of, his, of his guys. So, you know, my congratulations go out to them for what they've been able to accomplish up to this point so far. And I also want to state that uh, Brooks had participated in a uh, passing camp in uh, Athens with uh, Coach Rick. And Coach Rick really liked what he saw from uh, from Brooks. So there might be something going on there here later after this football season is over with um, you might see Brooks committing early to University of Georgia for the 2014 uh, recruiting class. But we've got Mr. Kevin Weekly on the line. What's going on, Kevin? Not much. How's everybody doing? Not too bad. Uh, you having a, you having a good old time down there in Athens? Everything's good in Athens. A little warm today. Yeah, it was a little warm today, wasn't it? Yeah. Everything else is pretty good. How's everything up in Cartersville going? Not too bad. It's a little warm, sunny. It's been a little cloudy, but you know it happens. Yep. Well, yeah, we got started off a little slow around here with the rain, but it worked out to be a decent week. Oh, yeah, it, it definitely did. Uh, we just, I was just talking about how uh, Coach Barton's uh, youngest son, Brooks, is uh, he's going to be the starting quarterback for Carlsville this year and uh, how uh, how well they did in that uh, Cam Newton Foundation 707 uh, passing tournament. But, Kevin, we've got a caller on the line. Uh, you're on the Bartow Sports Showcase. Who's this? Hey, my dog. How's it going? Not too bad. How are you doing? I know I do. Who is this? Calling this 976 number. <laughs> you are so wrong for that. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all never think so, maybe. I'll just tell you that. Well, thank you. 
How you doing? Not too bad. You doing all right? Good. Hey, look, I just want to remind everybody to keep the whole Auburn Nation in their thoughts and, and in their hearts because I can't even imagine if that were to happen in our nation. Oh, I, I have to completely agree. I am very happy that the uh, the gentleman that actually created all this havoc has been apprehended. Didn't he turn himself in? I believe he did. Uh, his, his, well, didn't mean to step on y'all, but I, his family talked him into it. And they took him, they gave him a lawyer and took him to the courthouse. Wow. I just wanted to remind everybody just to keep him in there. I just... Horrible, and I can't even imagine if that were to happen. No, I, I have to completely agree. It's, it was a horrible thing that happened, and everybody throughout the south, the southeast, you know, SEC, anybody, I know that they had Auburn and the Auburn family in their hearts and minds because of this tragedy that happened. Absolutely. I, I cannot believe the outpouring of support from the from the Georgia fans been un- unbelievable and just uh, just on the Facebook page and then the number of Auburn fans that have posted telling us how much they appreciate it it's been unreal yeah our adult nation is amazing it really it really is and I mean some heartfelt I, I've cried I mean it's I just, some, some I heartfelt some heartfelt posts that really shook me up but anyways can't imagine getting up going to the other side of the table and Having that happen in Athens. No, I, 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 I couldn't. Or the University of Georgia, I really feel for them. Hey, look, I'm ready for football. Just, just so you know, I need football. <laughs> I think we all do it in, in, in a way. That's a way yeah. for me to let loose of some of this, you know, built up stuff that I can't, you know, people are looking at me crazy if I start hugging and hollering. Football allows me to do that without anybody thinking I'm crazy. Into, into the game, especially if it's a team they're pulling for, and you can just act a fool and no one thinks twice about it. Exactly. It's like, what, 76 days, 70-something days? 77 days. That's a lucky number right there. How about that? And uh, the quote from Coach Rick is, expectations should be high. We are, turn- we are returning some outstanding players. We hadn't won a game yet. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's our team, our time, no regrets, right? That's right. Hey, what's my doing? She is working on a couple different things at the moment. She's not actually at the station. She is working on a couple different things at home. You stuff her. I miss her, and I love her. I sure will. Y'all have a great night. You too. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. Well, it's about time she called in. Was that Lou? Yeah. I thought it was. Yeah, it's about time she called in. She called in. Lord, it's got to be a couple months now. I know she's been working a lot. She has been, and it's understandable if if you're if you're working different things like that. It's it's understandable, but come on now. And a lot of people get nervous about calling a radio show. I know. I don't and know. We're not why. gonna bite you. I promise you, we're not gonna bite you. You can ask us any stupid question you want. That's right. And it's all gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. I don't. I won't yell and scream at you. I don't think Kevin will. I would love an Auburn fan to come call even. Yeah, I, I know a couple of them. I, I tried to get them too earlier. I just, I just don't know if they will or not. We can turn the hose on them. <laughs> we can turn the hose on them later a- after the show. You know, electronic equipment. You know, electric equipment, not water. Don't mix too well. But you know, after the show, yeah, we'll turn the hose on them. It's fine. Well, it's a great day to get hosed out. It's hot. <laughs> Yeah, it is. A, it is nice and toasty out there. Uh, would you see? Uh, well, I know. I know you're keeping a good close eye on it. How's Bubba doing in the open? Bubba's not doing worth flipping the open. Yeah, I saw that. Bubba's having a hard time making a cut unless he needs to start hitting driver on every hole. I think so. I saw. Um, I checked it out earlier. Him and Phil Mickelson, just some big yeah, names. I've got, just, I've got one of the laptops floating around on it right now. I'm about to try to watch it. Yeah, it's it, it's gotten ugly. Nah, it's that just, place is gonna be tough. Um, I, that yeah. place is getting harder and harder. Those greens are gonna be hard to putt. Those. Oh yeah, I can't. I, I couldn't fathom it. I, I I try to play. I don't ever say. I've never said that I'm good. 
but I, I just can't imagine trying to play a course where that many professionals are having that hard of a time. I just, I, no, I just, I'd look at it and go, no, that's it, I ain't doing it. Yeah, that'd be a two-day event. <laughs> First nine holes. <laughs> Eighteen, it'd take me two days to get through nine. <laughs> Three cases of golf balls. I'd lose one every stroke. So how... So Kevin, what, what's what's the good word? I, I know what the bad word is right now, but what's the good word? The good word is I expect us to have twenty five verbal commitments by by the time we kick off for Buffalo. I do too. It, it's we're up to uh, nineteen right now, I believe. And they're at eighteen or nineteen. Eighteen. I want to say eighteen now. We, you know, Derek Henry. You know, took away the verbal, and Kewen Prester, Prester, I think is how you pronounce the guy's last name. He's a four-star wide receiver from Orlando, but uh, he's actually transferred. He's going to do his senior year at Brookwood High School in Norcross. But uh, rumor has it, Derrick Henry is, the dogs are not through with him. No, and I don't think they ever, they will be. Well, Kevin, we got another caller on the line. You're on the Bartow Sports Showcase. Who's this? Hello? Hello? Hello, testing. All right, maybe we'll get another one. Maybe one more tonight? <laughs> I think someone accidentally dialed us. It could get interesting. Hold on. Is anybody on the phone? I'm not real sure. I don't think they knew we called us. This could get real interesting, Kevin. I got to hang up. I got to hang up before something bad happens. I think they actually, I think they both dialed us. Did they? I think they dialed us. Testing one, you're tying up our line. <laughs> I, I turned this one off. Before, before, something, before something bad happened, I, I went ahead and hung up. They got the dispute with their wife? Yeah, something. I think, it, I think it was a female that called, but I'm not real sure, and I can't guarantee you. It might, I, know, I saw the number, so it wasn't Cindy Lou. Uh, Brandy just walked in, so uh, she she just missed Cindy Lou, and uh, she's she's a little sad about that. And Cindy Lou, she says she's sorry. So uh, hopefully she'll call back. Maybe we can get her to call back in, and right. you know, may, maybe I, I don't. It's hard to get her to call in the first time. The second time's probably impossible. I was hoping you could might call in tonight. Yeah, I hope so. Then we can't get Mark right to call in. Yeah. But uh, met Marshall Morgan this week. Oh, you did? Over at the practice field. Nicest kid you'll ever meet your whole life. Good. Uh, I know uh, I know him and uh, Colin's been hanging out a good bit. They are rooming together. They are roommates, dorm mates, team dorm. Colin was on the way, but I had to take Tommy to tennis. We were just picking up some stuff from over at the university for him to take out to where he was playing tennis. But gosh, what a nice guy! Oh yeah. Well, Kevin, we got we got another caller on the line. You're on the Bartow Sports Showcase. Who's this? Uh, hello. Uh, I have a question for Kevin briefly. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I have a question about um, how do you think Texas A and M and Missouri are going to affect um, like how Georgia's going to play and the SEC Bowl if they make it there against like some of the top 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 teams in the conference like LSU and Alabama. I think Missouri's going to have a pretty good football team, and Texas A&M is doing a heck of a job of recruiting. I'm not sure if they're going to do it, you know, if, how many games they're going to win in the SEC this year, but I'm sure they're going to win a few. Um, in the long run of things, I think they're both going to end up pretty good. Heck, Missouri picked up the number one prospect in the nation last year, and I'm sure they'll build on that. And they're doing a lot to improve their athletics. So they're spending a lot of money getting the field ready for the dogs. I think the only reason they're getting the field ready is because we're coming to town. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that one, Kevin. But uh, their field looks fantastic, and I'm sure their stadium's going to get bigger. But uh, it's kind of exciting. That, you know, it's going to be a long trip out there, but it should be fun. It's going to be history in the making. Yes, it, Thank you. it really is going to be. Well, we appreciate the call. Um, I've just I pulled up uh, A&M's uh, schedule, 
their first one, their first SEC game is going to be Florida. Yep, yeah, that's exactly right. And, uh, then, and then they go ahead, go ahead. They got Louisiana Tech and Florida, then SMU and South Carolina State, then Arkansas. I'm just, I'm not sure how Arkansas is going to be. I think they'll be pretty good, but I just, I, I don't, I just don't have a good. They could surprise a lot of people, but I don't think Arkansas is going to be where they were last year. You can say anything you want about Bobby Petrino, but I would. There's not another man around that I would not want in a game situation calling my plays. No, I agree. He's a great man, play caller. Call a man can call a game. He will roll the dice on you too. Oh, Lord, yeah. But I don't believe he'll ever be hired in the state of Georgia. No. <laughs> but he is, it's funny. To, it's funny to me because he he just he bailed on the the Falcons to go to Arkansas, and we all know how it ended at Arkansas. Who's going to pick him? Who's going to give him a job now? I mean, nobody honestly, will. Nobody will. <laughs> I mean, honestly. But A and M's rec, uh, schedule doesn't get any better. So Arkansas, they got at they're at Ole Miss. Then they're home against LSU, which will help them a lot. Then they're at Auburn, at Mississippi State, at Alabama, back to back to back. So A and M's got Florida second, right? Florida second. You know where Florida goes from there? I can give me two seconds, and I'll let you know. Tennessee. Oh yeah, they're and they're in Knoxville. In Knoxville, so Florida plays back to back tough games away. Yeah, I, I, which which doesn't usually fit their scheduling practice. I know. That, that's just unusual for them, isn't it? That is very unusual for them. They try to get warmed up to everybody by playing nobody. Oh, they they've got they've got an ugly schedule. A and M at A and M at Tennessee. Then they go to Kentucky. Uh, then they go they take a week off. Then they go to LSU. Or they're they're home against Kentucky and LSU. Then they go to Vanderbilt. Then they're home against South Carolina. Then they've got Georgia in the quote unquote neutral playing side. I've still never agreed with that. And then they got Missouri. Bingo. Look up, read off South Carolina's schedule to us. That's the one that, that, that game is, you know, usually we think the Florida game is the biggest game. It's heads or tails this year, which we, we yeah. I have, if, you want, if you had to pick a game, I want to sit on the 50-yard line seven rows up, which game would you want to go to, South Carolina or Florida? I'd have to flip a coin on that one right now. I'd go South Carolina. I really yeah. would. I think the South Carolina is going to be the not the biggest game for Georgia, but it's going to be a major, major game. Missouri is going to set the tone for the whole SEC, SEC schedule for Georgia. Yeah, Missouri, the thing about it, if anybody can make it to Missouri, that's going to be, that's, that's, you know, forever you'll be able to say when Missouri finally makes it, which they will in the SEC, and you're going to be part of history. Yeah, you were at the first one. going to be remembered forever, and it's going to be watched nationwide. It's going to be, they're going to make it a huge event trying to welcome Oh, yeah. This SEC's big on making this expansion thing good and look good to everybody including the other conferences, because they're getting ready to try to take on two more teams. I can promise you all that. Yeah, and that's something I want to get into you when, when we get uh, – we got about 10 seconds left before we got to take a hard break. But when we get back, I want to talk to you about who, who you think is going to be coming into the conference next. Okay. But uh, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right Hold on back. one second. Somebody call the show. Yeah. Give us a call, 770-382-1270. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. I want, I want to hear, I want at least four callers this second, this second half of the show. I want at least four callers. Give us a call, 770-382-1270. I don't buy hard. Kevin might just a little bit, but he's in Athens, and you're going to be on the phone, so it won't really matter. But give us a call, 770-382-1270. Kevin, hang on just a few minutes. We'll be right back with the Bartow Sports Showcase on News Talk AM 1270 WYXC. Medicaid 
fund is hundreds of millions in the red. Officials with the Georgia Department of Community Health say they'll have to ask for more than $300 million from state lawmakers to make up the shortfall in 2013. Comes as more than 600,000 state residents join Medicaid rolls due to changes in federal health care laws. Commissioner David Cook admits the budget numbers are very daunting. Mike Conti, GNN News. And the state legislature failed to allocate funds for money owed in the final month of the fiscal year. Georgia's Medicaid system is about to get a major overhaul. Commissioner Cook says we should end up with lower costs and better care. University of Georgia hosted a blood drive with the Red Cross in honor of Amy Copeland. Her father says she feels quite a bit of phantom pain, but she's trying to keep an optimistic attitude. She's lost her hands, right foot, left leg to flesh-eating bacteria. Doug Dodine, GNN News. Beginning in July, the licensing requirements of the Department of Driver Services are changing for everyone. Visit online at dds.ga.gov for a list of requirements for renewing, applying for, or reinstating a driver's license or ID. You'll need to bring original documents to prove identity, residency, and social security number. Be prepared. Create and print your personal checklist by visiting dds.ga.gov. Here's NASCAR Nationwide Series driver Justin Allgaier for Brandt. Winning is about managing the variables that every race throws at us each week. The American farmer has to deal with the changing variables that Mother Nature delivers each week, too. Brandt Powers is on track and powers and partners with the American farmer every day. And that winning partnership has been in place ever since 1953. Learn more about how Brandt and their products can help you online at www.brandt.co. Brandt, take control today. This newscast has been brought to you by Jerry Reed Hyundai, where we invite you to stop in and take a look at the North American Car of the Year, the all-new Hyundai Elantra. Plus, we'll show you how you can get over 40 miles per gallon. Terry Reed Hyundai. Highway 41 on the hill right here in Cartersville. Remember, folks, nobody beats a Terry Reed Hyundai deal. Fox in the fast lane. Expect a much faster race this weekend at Pocono, thanks to repaving in the off-season. Carl Edwards is ready for the new track. We're going into it with real open minds and hoping that we can master that surface. Another big change, the race is now 100 miles shorter, which pleases Greg Biffle. I think that's going to create some excitement with the fans. You know, I think it's going to be a little better race, maybe not so drawn out. NASCAR suspends Kurt Busch for one race for verbally abusing a reporter after last week's nationwide series race at Dover. Taking over for Bush's ride this week at Pocono, David Rudiman. Bush was previously fined $50,000 and placed on probation on July 25th for reckless driving on pit road at Darlington and a post-race fight. Bush is probation now until the end of the year. And driver owner Cotton Owens, just elected to the NASCAR Hall of Fame's class of 2013, has died at the age of 88. Fox in the Fast Lane. I'm Marge Tashina, Fox News Radio. I'm Tony White, GNN Sports. The Atlanta Braves begin a three-game home series with the Orioles this evening. Atlanta enters the affair with a four-game losing streak. Tommy Hansen will be on the mound for the Braves. The O's will counter with Brian Mattis. LeBron James scored 32 points, and the Miami Heat evened up the NBA Finals in a game apiece by downing the Thunder last night, 196 in Oklahoma City. Michael Thompson, the leader, threw 18 holes of the U.S. Open at Olympic Club in San Francisco. Thompson carded seven birdies en route to a 4-under par 66. That puts him three shots ahead of a group that includes Tiger Woods. And the Atlanta Dream will host the Los Angeles Sparks at Phillips Arena this evening. Atlanta's been off since suffering that 92-73 loss to the Connecticut Sun on Sunday. The Dream dropped to 3-5 and five on the season with a setback. Chatting linebacker Sean Weatherspoon is the undisputed leader of Atlanta's defense. Weatherspoon, not surprisingly, says he's up to the challenge. That's sports. I'm Tony Wank of the Georgia News Network. News Talk AM 1270 and Six Flags Over Georgia have teamed up to bring you a summer of fun. We have dozens of free tickets to give away to our listeners. It's just another way to say thank you for listening. Six Flags is a great way to spend a summer day of fun and rise that only Six Flags can offer. Want to know how you can win? Just listen to the live Drive at 5 program each weekday and wait for Shady Grady to tell you when to call in for your chance to win. Six Flags Over Georgia and WYXC News Talk AM 1270, your free ticket to a day of fun and sun. If you have an electrical project or problem and don't know who to call, JDH Electric is your one call for all of your electrical needs, commercial, industrial, residential. Let us shock you with our service. Call today, 770-607-6900. Hey, 
this is Mary Elizabeth. And Will. Louie, come back here. <laughs> anyway, while Will chases Louie down, I want to talk to you about Louie's Cafe. We're located in the Goodwill Shopping Center, right across from the hospital on Highway 41. We're open from 6.30 to 2, Monday through Friday, and we offer a full breakfast Saturday mornings. Here, you hold them. We have fresh sandwiches, delicious salads, and the best coffee in town. With our indoor and outdoor seating, drive through call-ahead ordering, and a full line of catering, we make it easy to fit breakfast or lunch into your schedule. We may not be the best thing since sliced bread, but we are the best thing on it. Come see us at Louie's Cafe. Woodland Hills Golf Club in Carter Grove is a semi-private 18-hole golf club located five minutes south of Carterville, Georgia. Come and play for today or join the club and play as often as you like. Visit us at woodlandhills-golf.com or call 678-605-8585. <laughs> see that one happening any 
anytime soon. I don't think I think Chick Fil A will take Jerry Jones out. Yeah, I hope so. But I, I mean, I know that that's in, I know that's part of his thoughts because that's why he was so, trying to host some SEC games last year. He's he's mentioned it, but I don't know if it'll go that way. But, I but I, you know, the thing is, when will it go to 16 teams? They're going to have a hard enough time getting this playoff system in place. Oh yeah. And getting everybody to agree on it. And if they do go to 16 teams. Will they leave it as two, or will they divide it up into four? In other words, would you have four teams that you played on a regular basis and then mix and match the rest of them? Or would you have a nine-game SEC schedule and play it? play seven other SEC teams, then play with us, we'd play Auburn, and then have a rotating schedule with the rest of the West. So it's tough, you know. It's just tough to put that yeah, it, 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 together. It's it's gonna be tough, but I I don't see it not happening. Oh no, it's gonna happen. It, it's gonna happen. Um, what I think, in my personal opinion, I've always liked the way Georgia Southern and all how their playoff system works. Well, that's a true playoff. System. That that's a true playoff system, but it's not just a fourteen playoff. It's a true playoff system. It's, it's like the uh, NCAA uh, basketball bracket. Yeah, the, the complaints you're going to get there from the from is it's just too hard on the kids. You know that's I know. the SEC. The SEC conference is tough enough, and then to to put a bunch of people that are banged up, tired, to put them at risk playing extra games that are that difficult, that back to back to back. People are going to argue about that. I, I, I mean, and that's understandable. Is you're never going to. I don't think Division One, SEC, ACC, Big East, all them. I don't think they're ever going to have a playoff system like that. Because but it is the true playoff system. Yeah, because it, it. But even though it is the true playoff system, I don't think they'll have something like that because of those complaints. Because of the. They, they want to make sure the health of the kids is there, and I agree with that. But they've got to figure something out because every year after year, especially after this last year, Alabama and LSU playing each other for the national championship, they're going to do anything and everything they can to keep that from happening again. Well, no, they, well, they're kind of they've kind of gone away with that because all of the commissioners are saying we want the best four teams to play. But and let me backstep on what I just said. What I see happening is you're going to have the conferences, the SEC is going to go to 16, a bunch of other conferences are going to go to 16. And you, people are saying, well, how can you, if you win your conference, how can you not be in the playoff system? So the playoffs will actually start with the SEC championship game, with the ACC championship game, and then roll in to the 14th playoffs. But I, you know, but there's people fighting that as well. There's, they got ten different models, and nobody, nobody's agreeing on them yet, or where they're going to play, or what bowls are, you know, if they're going to take out bowls, or they're going to add bowls. I mean, what if they're going to have a playoff system? Great. Use the four major bowls: at Rose Bowl, Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl, Fiesta Bowl. Fiesta Bowl. Use those. Yeah. Use them because that's what they're. That's what you're doing with them anyway. For the most part, use them. But, you know, the rest of these schools that are, you know, they've got 300,000 other bowl games, you know, toy bowl, peanut bowl, paper bowl, you know. Sure. Continue to use them. Let these other schools that may become bowl eligible, let them play in these bowl games. Oh, Don't. without a doubt. The FCC already took care of that by, you know, signing that deal. With, uh, right now I'm drawing a blank on the bowl, but, you know, they they got the pack whatever, the pack 10 and the SEC. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's already, that's already going to happen. You know, I'm with you on, on using the, 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 the four big bowls that have been rotating for the BCS championship as the, as the bowl games, but uh, they darn sure don't need to get rid of the bowls because what the bowls do for those communities with the volunteers and raising money for for St. Jude's Children Hospital, from the Liberty Bowl all the way down to the Poolin, Poolan Weed Eater Bowl, raising money. That's fantastic events. They work. No, they, they, need stick, they need to stick with them. I completely agree. And, you know, I never want to see any of them go away. I, you know, I think what they're thinking is, and, and, and I hate to say it, but they, when they think, they think they're looking at you, they're looking at your wallet. Yeah, that, that's exactly thinking, right. We can keep the Fiesta Bowl. We can keep the Sugar Bowl. We can put... Let's say that Auburn, that Alabama and LSU, once again, let's let's take that back. Let's say that Georgia and LSU meet in the SEC championship game in 2014, and Georgia wins. Well, then LSU automatically goes to the Sugar Bowl. Yeah. In 
and then, you know, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And then they get to carry on with another, with the playoff bowl and keep it rolling. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with that. That, I think that would solve a lot of the, well, we should have been there. Okay. Yeah. I mean. The big thing they're going to have is, that they're struggling with is, if you win your conference, if you win your conference championship, should you be playoff eligible? Or, if you're, if you're the higher ranked team, remember, if we had to beat LSU last year, what would have happened? We'd have screwed up the whole horse race. Oh, Lord, yeah. I mean, and that's what they're afraid of. We were the perfect, perfect example of this is what we don't want to happen. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's happened before where, uh, Oklahoma, I think it was Oklahoma and LSU. Oklahoma. But think about this. The Mountain West Conference has no chance of getting <laughs> <laughs> They don't. They, they have absolutely no chance. So why are they going to agree to it when they say, well, our conference champion is going to be rated number 16. How in the world are we going to play pretty fast? Where are we going to play? In the toilet bowl. Yeah. So, so that's where they're getting some. They're, they're going to they're gonna play on Smurf turf. Exactly. That, that's, that's what they're going to do. They're going to play on Smurf turf. I mean, well, it's, I, do think, I do think, and it's probably going to be, it may be four to five years before it goes to a 16 16 team conference. I mean, if any, what, what is it? There's six BCS conferences, I believe. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's right. W- why not do, be, you know, take those six teams that are already getting automatic bids to the BCS games, the top two ranked in the BCS get a first round bye, let the two, the you know, the other four teams play, then throw you in the why? top two teams. Why? Because Notre Dame and BYU are going to see you in Washington, D.C. That's true. They're going to sue you so quick, it's going to make your head swim, and they're sitting around there waiting to sue everybody. That is and true. And everybody knows it. Well, then make them do away with this independent crap and make them join a conference. BYU and, and, and Notre Dame can slow down this process by, you know, just, just like Donald Trump did with the NFL and the USFL. Yeah. You know, we have been... They are running, they are, they have a monopoly. Yeah, they... Because we're not in a conference. Nobody ever said you had to be in a conference to be an NCAA school and compete in Division One football. Well, you know, how you, you know how you solve that problem? Change for the SEC. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love, I would love to see Georgia play Notre Dame again. I would too. I mean, it... Hey, why, why'd you do it? Look at Notre Dame's schedule. They're not scared. They'll play anybody. They play the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, that is true. They will play just yeah, about they'll play anybody. anybody. Just, just call them. They'll play you. <laughs> so you think if I called them, do you think they would come down here to Carswell and play us? They'll play the Purple Hurricanes oh, on yeah. Thursday, though. It's, all right, let, let, we, we got, I got a Notre Dame schedule. Navy, Purdue, Michigan State, Michigan, Miami, Florida, Stanford, BYU, Oklahoma, Pittsburgh, Boston College, Wake Forest, and USC. <laughs> Holy crap. It's like they closed their what eyes. What happened to Florida Atlantic? Uh, apparently, I don't know. I think Wake, they changed it then for Wake Forest or something. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I mean, it's like they closed their eyes, threw a dart, and said, Oh, they play, play you. Uh, think about it. They play from Florida to California. Yeah. Look at all the places get... they play. I don't, know, I don't know who's at home. They got the whole world cup. They do. Oklahoma. Then they go to they go to California once. Twi- uh, no, they got they go to California once, and they have a team from California come to them. Hey, right, Kevin, we got another caller on the line. You're on the Bartow Sports Showcase. Who's this? Just kidding. <laughs> I, I think I scared him. I'm sorry. Next time, I'm, I'm going to whisper. Apparently, call on back. Come on, you call on back. It's all right. But I mean, they they got Stanford coming to them. They go to they go to USC. They played Michigan State there. And remember, they, we just played Michigan State. They're not a bad football team. No. Then they have Michigan coming to them. And they're not a bad football team. No, they they're not. Michigan's going to be pretty. It's going to be. I think they're going to be pretty good this year. I think uh, Michigan State lost their quarterback though. Yeah, they did. But I think Michigan State's going to be okay. But they were really good last. They were a lot better than, than people. But, People gave them credit for it. Well, they ended up ranked pretty high. Yeah, they really did. I think they ended up being well, close to the top ten. 
I think the, what they're working toward is the, is the SEC championship game and the Pac-10 championship game will all truly be championship games, and then the winners of those will move into the four-game playoff. I agree. Well, Kevin, uh, we got about three, two or three minutes left. Um, I've got, uh, I've got something that uh, has just been bugging me for about a week now. It's, uh, it, it, I'm gonna call it my final thought of the show. Um, me and Brandy went to a Braves game, and uh, it's a Braves Yankees game. This the second game being played at Turner Field, and we were there. We were sitting. We had great seats in the outfield, and there was. I, I promise you, there was a ton of Yankee fans there. There were more Yankee fans at Turner Field than there were Braves fans. And that just really hurt my feelings. I mean, we, we were in Atlanta, and, you know... And you got swept. It's not even just that. It's not even that. You know, they get swept. It happens. They're playing better on the road right now anyway. But there were more Yankee fans in Atlanta at Turner Field. It's they got the following. They, there's, a they lot, do. there's a lot of Yankee fans everywhere. But it, that just that just ate me up. And I've been stewing about it. And I am tired of it. Well, I love you. I just want to give a shout-out to all the Auburn folks. Y'all be strong. I know it's not going to get any better right quick, but just y'all just be strong, and Dog Nation loves y'all. That's right. You know, our, our all our hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to the uh, Auburn family with the uh, tragedy that has happened. But the young man is in custody. Um, I'm glad that he is in custody. His family really talked, you know, like you said, talked him into it. But, uh, um, you know, I just hate that it even happened. We will see y'all in the fall in the plains. That's right. And we will have no sympathy on you. That's right. Y'all have a good night. You too, Kevin. I appreciate the call, man. Later. Bye. Go dogs. Go dogs. Hey, I, 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 I you know, I hate that there, all that happened at Auburn, and I'm just, I'm still stewing about this, all these Yankee fans that were at Turner Field, so I've got something for all the Yankee fans. That, that is the Braves war chant, and uh, we are about 50 seconds out from the end of the show. I just want to say thank you to Kevin calling in and give, you know, having a great show with me tonight. I appreciate everybody listening, everybody that called in. Uh, tune in next week. We are going to have Ronnie Brown and possibly Andre Fluellen in the studio June the 29th. That's going to be a big show for us. Everybody tune in 6, 6 to 7 every Friday. Appreciate everybody listening. You're listening to Bartow Sports Showcase on News Talk AM 1270 WYXE. Corners with Jordan.